Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at Travis Cloak, who played for Collingwood and also the Western Bulldogs. And we're going to have a look at the shooting incident where his house got shot at. A bullet went through his window while he was home back in 2009. But as usual on this channel, we always over deliver. And while researching this event, I actually found out he actually went through a lot more uh, than I knew previously. So Travis Cloak has gone through a shitload of stuff and I would like to bring it up in this video. As well as that, we're going to name some suspects who we think it might be who might have shot at the house. We're going to get to the bottom of this and find out who it was. So basically the story goes, back in 2009, in May, Travis Cloak was sitting at home by himself. A shot was fired into the home at Ringwood North. He was alone at the time and it shattered an upstairs window of the family house. Pretty crazy stuff. Now, he lives at home with his dad, David, who, of course, played in the AFL back in the 80s, premiership player, and his mum, Julie. Police are investigating the shooting, along with a spiteful note left in the letterbox for his sister. Now, the note left in the letterbox is believed to slander Cloak's sister and was handed to the police, and they've analysed it. We don't know the outcome of it, though. And just as a side note, have a look at how some things are worded with the media. They always word things in a sensational way. And a lot of times they get information incorrect. So Cloak, who was bashed by a thug on the Sunshine Coast in the off-season, is being cancelled daily over the terrifying turn his life has taken. Now, as far as I know, it was a New Year's Eve party in 2008, the end of 08, going into 09, so it was about five months prior to this. And he told some guys to keep it down. And then they got into a scuffle. I don't think it was some thug who just bashed him. I think there was an altercation on a New Year's Eve party. And they got into a fight. And that's what happened. So it goes on to say forensic specialists have examined the house, not known if they recovered the bullet or not, which is helpful. David Cloak refused to confirm or deny the shooting, which happened. Uh, what do you mean? How can he deny it? Like it did actually happen, right? That's why the cops were there checking it out. It's like those threatening letters written to the AFL players. The more it was publicised, the more they enjoy it. I didn't even know people wrote letters to AFL players. And I don't think that's a... Stalking is a big deal, absolutely. But people writing letters, it's not that hard to figure out where famous people live. And I don't think people that write letters are going to confront them directly. And although these things can escalate, it's probably just a bit of an annoyance and a bit creepy. And then if you go on to read the next bit, it's quite scary to think that maybe David Cloak did something about this, uh, about his son getting attacked supposedly on New Year's Eve. If you have to do stuff to protect yourself, you do it. It shouldn't happen to anyone. The drama comes as Cloak struggles for form and fitness, blah, blah, blah. He was traumatised by the assault on New Year's Eve that left him with facial injuries so it sounds like he got punched in the face the man charged with attacking him died in a car accident in march so he died three months later and here's david cloak saying if you have to protect yourself you do it holy shit i'm not saying anything happened but can you imagine anyway cloak's father said the attack may have left him with mental scars um but the key forward denied the assault and any bearing on his poor form now let's have a look at some of the suspects who may be responsible for this attack. Now, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just saying they're people that should be looked at. I'm not saying there's any reason we should say it's them. I just want to know if it is them. It may or may not be. Do they have a motive? Let's have a look. Tyson Edwards. Quarter controversy as Tyson Edwards left the field with a broken nose and concussion. Jason Cloak on report. Revenge, perhaps? What about Satantare Halpin? Blues by name, blues by nature. This is the punch and kick which has fractured the image of the Carlton Football God. Club. People really hate the cloaks, don't they? <laughs> we might have found him. Alan Didak. He's the culprit. He's the man. Lock him up. And for all you sensitive people out there, I'm just joking around. It is a serious incident, of course, uh, having your house getting shot at. Um, so anyway, we can look at the lighter side of this channel as well. We can be informative as well as being entertaining. But let's have a look at some of the other stuff that Travis Cloak has gone through as well. So this is pretty crazy. In 2017, he was playing for the VFL side and another player was sledging him. And supposedly an ex St Kilda player, 20 years old at the time, uh, he won't name who it is, but he practically walked off the field and was considering giving up football. That's how bad it was. He didn't really complain to anybody, but he told the umpires about it. And he was so mad that he walked off the, the field and considered quitting and was expecting an apology, but didn't get one. 
I mean, supposedly at the time, Travis Cloak was going through some mental health battles and anxiety and stuff like that. Maybe the St Kilda player just said, oh, you're a weak cunt or whatever, you know, you need counselling, you need help, you're weak, you're piss weak and all that shit. That's normal on a footy field as far as I'm concerned. Uh, pretty much anything is fair game when it comes to the footy field. I don't really care less what people say. Um, if you want to say, you know, racism is bad and you don't want to talk about that or people's kids, whatever, I say what, say whatever you can to get people off their game. doesn't bother me. Especially things like mental health. I mean, it is a mental game. You know, it's a, a psychological, emotional, mental warfare that you're trying to commit on other people, especially if you're trying to break back into an AFL side. So I have no issue with him saying anything about his mental health. So back in 2021, two years ago, Travis Cloak put a photo up on social media with his children on grand final weekend and then was basically had some vile comments said by some trolls. And he said, this is unacceptable. It's disgusting. My advice, okay, as bad as it is, I guess, like I, w I wouldn't put any photos of your children online anyway, but if you're a celebrity, I definitely wouldn't be posting photos of your children, especially when you have thousands of followers. Like someone like Pink found this out when she posted that she was pregnant and then posted photos of her kids or whatever. People are going to say nasty shit on social media. You know this going in. So I would suggest not putting up photos of your kids at all. And another incident a few years back when he left Collingwood to go to the Western Bulldogs, he's revealed that his car was smashed and graffitied prior to leaving Collingwood. This is kind of weird. So he, he lives in Richmond, plays for Collingwood, and then goes to the Western Bulldogs. Now he said here, you wake up in the morning and someone's graffitied your car or smashed your window with a note saying leave the club and within a few months you go. Maybe it's worth selling up and moving. I mean, this guy lives in Richmond one of the affluent suburbs, and then went to Kew, definitely one of the most affluent suburbs. It's like, how are people breaking your windscreen and graffitiing it? Don't you have a thing called a garage? Like, I know I put my car in a garage, so I don't understand why people leave their cars on the street in the first place. And especially in a place like Richmond or Kew, there should be some more secure places. And do you not have any surveillance cameras uh, watching your house and watching your cars? But look, I'm not saying it's right, okay? It's not. And obviously there's going to be dipshits that do things like this. For some reason, people hate Travis Cloak. Like he's a very, I just think he's a normal player, to be honest. I didn't think he was that polarizing compared to some people like Brendan Favola. But I mean, you know, for some reason, people just didn't like him. So there you have it on Travis Cloak. And look, let me just say this. He, the guy played 256 games as a center half forward, which is not easy. He had a raking left foot, powerful kick. He towered up Alex Rance in 2013 when they played Richmond in, I think it was round four. I remember that game. That was great to watch. But poor Cloak, he's been through a bit. Let me know who you think the suspect or the actual perpetrator might be and let me know your thoughts about Travis Cloak in the comments below.